Are you guys ready? We's ready. Action. Um, how you gonna help? Action. <laughs> Three, two, one. Oh, action. action. People ain't ready. <laughs> I love it. Action. You said she was you ready. Gonna, you Did she say she was ready? Cut. Sizzle after dark and the preacher's wife. Take two. Action. <laughs> I got my clapboard. You want me to get my clapboard? I do have my. I do have my clapboard. You need it. That's exactly what we need. Oh, don't worry about it. It's all good. Take twenty-six. I got a program for all of that. All of that. Um, on your for filming. Four, three, two. Hi, I'm Sizzle of Sizzle After Dark. I have the opportunity and the blessing to be in the presence of Miss Dominique Strawberry Scott of TLC's Sisterhood, the Preachers' Wives of Atlanta. Um, this interview is uber interesting to me because. I have probably mentioned a couple of things about a couple of mega church pastors, maybe once or twice. <laughs> and Miss Dominique is here to set me, you, and the record 100% straight. We're going to get to know the real preacher's wife. And when we say preacher's wife, just to look at this face and look at this smile, don't get it twisted, boo boo. Please don't. Um, <laughs> Dominique! Yay! The sizzle after dark. Hey, 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 sizzle after dark. Let's begin. Are Let's you? get it cracking. Let's get it cracking. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay, so first I want you to tell us a little bit about Dominique. And first, I, I just have to ask, how did you land a pastor? Did I, wait, wait, did I say land like you went fishing for this nigga? No, you, you, you were actually blessed and, and, and called to be with this one particular gentleman that happened to be a preacher? Yes. Or how did this happen? Uh, oh my God. First of all, we were friends for a okay. long time, for about two years. And we dated and uh, well, we were friends. And then one day he just calls me up and he goes, hey, um, I can't be your friend no more. I mean, like... Me and my dude, we were so cool, like we would talk about each other's date. He would come, man, I just went out with this girl, her grandpa was thinking, I mean, oh, man, I'm I went done. out with this dude. He was broke, he didn't want to spend no money on me. I mean, like, we were super hella cool. And then, like, a couple months into it, he calls me up and he goes, hey, I can't date you no more. I'm like, okay, what shit? Because you know how girls is, You another woman is always intimidated if a man has a friend girl or a real friend. There are relationships like yeah, that. Yeah, we, we have that. I have that issue a lot with a lot of people that um that just don't approve. I thought it was a me thing, but I learned that it's an everybody thing. Nobody wants their guy to be friends with a girl. But why not? Especially if she looked like, like me. me. I know. <laughs> like, I'm right. Like, I'm like, why? I mean, like, I'm getting him ready for you, boy. I'm keeping him right. I'm telling him how he needs to spend his money, what he needs to do, how he needs to romance you. And you hating on me, and I'm getting him ready for you. I'm not interested in him like that. And vice versa, he did the same thing for me. Mm -hmm. But moving forward, he calls me up and he says, you know what, I can't be your friend no more. I'm like, okay, so who is this chick oh. that's feeling some kind of way? Because I'm, I'm about to have her Google me because she really don't know <laughs> I who love I it. I love it. And so um, he said, no, it ain't nobody. I'm, I'm in love with you. And I said, you know what, you don't broke all the rules. Uh, you okay. had the man in a friend zone, dog. I'm, I'm, like, I'm telling all in love. I'm like, how you gonna do that? You messing up the groove. We're not <laughs> supposed to. We can't do that. <laughs> We're supposed to be friends. We're supposed to talk. I'm supposed to come to you and tell yeah. you my all all. You supposed. You know, we exchange your information. Right, right. We ain't sleeping together. We ain't creeping together. We ain't doing none of that. So we did talk for a couple months, and then finally, I'm at work over a shot of the I'm celebrating that I done made top seller of the of the of my district. Okay. And it hit me because one of the girls was talking about how her friend, her husband of 20-something years, polishes her hair, glue her weave in, polish her toenails. And it hit me, I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, I know someone like that. And it dawned on me that it was none other than the mogul B. Scott. You better say it. The, the mogul. mogul. The mogul, baby. <laughs> Here's, here's a, um, something I want you to iron the wrinkles out on. Okay. I have a lot of women that I minister to, and I have to let them know that, can, can I be real? I mean, I'm in, the presence of, I'm in the presence of all this. I, got, I just got to be 21. Right. 
Did you forget how you got that nigga? No. See, a lot of preachers' wives, you know, they get a step above the usher board in the church and they feel as if everyone is beneath them. And I have to let a lot of women know, you forgot you was right where that woman is. Did you forget that you once sat on the back pew? Did you forget that you sent that little note up there to that pastor and that's how you wound up with the uh, police? Uh, that's uh, not, that's that they make the cookies and drop the cake off and cook the extra pan and macaroni and cheese? Did you forget that you had that pastor come to your house and pray with you because? Oh, to all the events because you was his escort because no, he didn't want to go by himself? Yes, we do forget. Oh, and yeah, the sad thing about that as we as we connect over to the church is that when we put on that false, that what they call fear false evidence appearing real, we are really not aligning our women to be strong, your spiritual daughters. And so they don't understand that the same thing that they did to get them is the same that they have to do to keep them. And so mm. now you have all this infidelity, spiritual infidelity that's going on in the church because you don't want to keep it 100. You don't want to show them and teach them why, when it when decides to leave a brother alone. Because you want to act like you don't, you never, oh, you came out your mama wound speaking in tongue. Keep up on shopping. You've been saved all your life. Well, I, he, news flash, news flash. I have not been saved all my life. Hush your mouth. Not, not all talking. my life. I probably got about a good 36 months of faithfully, consistently tithing. <laughs> it's been about 12 months since I last cut somebody out real good. I mean, I'm just keeping it, as you say, 21. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. But that be my story. That'd be my story. You don't have a story. You was you weren't born speaking in tongues, no. but you you started at like three or four, right? Uh, it was much further on down. What? <laughs> and we just keep it. Let, it's, okay, since we're being real, I'm 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 all jokes aside. I want to take us back a little bit because okay. a lot of times people hear your glory, but they don't know your story. See, I try to tell them my story every day. I was born a hoe. I'm probably gonna be a hoe when I marry this preacher. You gonna hook me up with? Mm -hmm. You gonna hope you have a preacher? Man, I want them to have a big church. Them in the Can we have a big church? See, I don't care about them having side pieces. Oh, listen. Um, <laughs> I, you know, and when I say hoe, I don't mean prostitute hoe. I mean the fact that I have been around a few I get it. whole lot of blocks. Right. I get it. A whole lot of blocks. And I know that I, I know what I know <laughs> because I know that I know. Right. You know what I'm saying? So now I want you to help me to bring these women backwards. So they can see how you got to where you are. Let's start from one of your darkest, your darkest um, moments in your life. Let's talk about something that a person, a no, the normal ear, wouldn't, wouldn't even fathom. You, Dominique, have gone. So let's talk about that. Well, as you know, um, or they may not know, I'm actually a, a native of Miami. I'm a JMH baby. I'm a Jackson Memorial Hospital. You were born in Jackson. Jackson Girl, you don't know nothing about Jackson. Hoo -ha, and I'm a Northwestern baby payback dancer. Don't get it. Oh, wait a minute. Um, I got Western payback. Boom, you don't know. Boom. That's the bull. We I think flagging. that's the bull. We flagging. We flagging all day. <laughs> um, but there was a very uh, dark time in my life where um, I ended up on the streets of Miami at a very early age and it came out on the show that um, I was out there as early as 14 and I was a childhood prostitute all the way up into my early 20s and of course during this time we're in the middle 80s so crack has hit the streets of Miami like an epidemic and there I was drunk out on crack cocaine selling my body and then in the midst of all of that I give birth to my beautiful son and um, and all of that, his father and I and all the girls, we were strung out on the back, we were selling our body. We were walking the very same streets on 69th and 17th Avenue. 69th um, and 17th. I remember that when I was a little younger, I remember a, a pretty popular pimp over mm -hmm. there. Everybody over there belonged to this one specific pimp. Yeah. I think now there's a family dollar on that corner, but there's still a little bit of traffic, but not like the traffic. That not like it was back in the day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so... Um, that was my life for about a um, like good eight years. And so out of that, um, one day I was in the house getting high on crack and God allowed me to have an out of body experience and he showed me myself literally crawling on the floor trying to find rocks and he said, if you don't get up from here, you will die here. At this time, keep in mind, I had never even heard the voice of God. I wasn't raised in no church, didn't know nothing about no God, nothing, but I knew that what I heard was not a figment of my imagination because it was so powerful that it literally caused me to get up, 
and walk out that door. Now, mind you, I didn't stop using it. I just stopped walking the streets and walked out that crack house. It was a full year later before I stopped using it. How did you manage to get, um, how did you manage to get away from those two vices? Those are pretty powerful, being a prostitute under a pimp's leadership and also being strung out so deep into crack cocaine. How did you get away from the both of them? This is when we say hashtag bug guy. You better say it. Hashtag bug guy, because literally, I walk into a church in Care City called Gospel Tabernacle. There was a singing evangelist and a prophetess. They laid hands on me, I went down. When I came up, I promise you, from that day, 30 years later, I have never picked up that pipe again. I have never had the desire for crack cocaine or any form of substance. And I've been good ever since then. It was nothing but that. And, it, it, wow, that's awesome. That's awesome in itself. Um, and how did you come out of prostitution? My pastors at that time just took me in. Um, they helped me get my housing. They uh, began to personally mentor me, Vivian, John and Vivian Irvin, who's still my spiritual mom today. Um, they took me under their wing. They just taught me that holiness is a reality and that God loved me. And they began to show me how to walk upright as a righteous woman, as a woman or a daughter of God. Okay, now, I've always been told that pimps are hard to get away from. I keep touching this because I want to set, the, like I said, we've got to set the record straight. This is Kitchen Table Talk, right? Right, Kitchen Table Talk. Hey, so go. I want to satisfy every curiosity because i got a lot of people listening, a whole lot of people watching, and with a whole lot of misconceptions. Right. Um, I've always been taught that once you're with a pimp, it's hard to get away. He'll kill you first. True. So That's how did you so. manage to... Well, it's two Get things. Him away from you. It's two things with that. First of all, when you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, come come hell or high water, you out, you done. Ain't nothing you can say to me that's gonna make me change my mind. That's number one. But what people don't understand about my particular situation was that my dude was he was a businessman, mm -hmm. and so and because his parents were are still today pastors and leaders, mm -hmm. he had to bow down. Just like when you see a lot of secular artists. All of them come back from church background. Mm -hmm. So no matter what you go to, your roots, when you train them for the child the way that they should go, even though they depart, they got to return back to that. So when I told him that God had called me, he had to shut it down and know that he couldn't touch me because he feared God. Mm -hmm. And so he allowed me to go my way. And then, of course, me having his last child, his last seed, and he truly had a love and respect for me, he let me go. You had a child from him? Yes, my oldest okay, son. Okay, okay, okay. Look at it. awesome. We walked away from that situation when AIDS was hitting our streets, mm. crack cocaine was an epidemic. Me and my child, ex we escaped, when I say without a scar or a blemish, and no, nothing that you could tell that we had ever been a part of that. Wow. Now that's awesome. That's a story. That's, that's, that's a story in itself. Now, you got away from that, and you got into the church. Were you in the church from then till now, or? Yeah. I mean, I've had, like all people, I, I went for about maybe 10 straight years. Then I had my moonwalking battles. Hey, you better say it. <laughs> and then, um, because you know, in the church, you know, you, you're trying to tell me. Let, we talking real, right? I believe so. You want me to serve your God, but you broke, you catching a bus, you fat, you you living in the projects, and you trying to pull a chick like me who done rode in limousine, who lived in the penthouse, that kept two, three thousand dollars or more. And we talking about in the 80s on the side of her bed. They went and bought red bottles before red bottles was even popular. Mm -hmm. This is the lifestyle that I'm living, and you want to pull me from that to you, from my God, because that is the God of darkness, that is the God of who I'm serving, the God of the world. You want to pull me from that to over here, and you broke us in a disgusting, and, and, and I don't understand. So if you're going to pull me from that, you're going to have to have something to keep it, because let me tell you something. Holes going to hold, addicts going to use, and tricks going to trick. Hoes gonna hold, addicts gonna use, and tricks gonna trick. And if you don't have anything uh, to uh, push, push pause. Ain't nobody hear her say hoes gonna hold. Where y'all hoes at? Y'all ain't hear these people say hoes gonna hold. Let that marinate and I'm gonna come back to that. Go ahead, sugar. I'm just saying, if if you don't have, and this is what this is why the church is failing. Because you wanna call me out, but you have nothing to put me in. Mm -hmm. If you wanna call me out, have something to put me in. 
Put me, don't put me in the projects and tell me, oh, we're gonna pray over this twenty-five dollar life. I don't need you to pray with no twenty-five dollar <laughs> life. Are you out your mind? <laughs> and, but you want me to believe that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and the cattle from a thousand hills belong to Him? But I'm woke. What gospel are you teaching? Because I can't subscribe to that. Right? Absolutely. That was, <laughs> right? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So now, um. Fast forward. No, you know what? I want to. I want to touch something that's a little controversial here. See, people okay. don't hear me. Yeah. They don't hear me. They don't hear you though. I when I spoke on pastors and mega churches and so such and so forth before your husband, even I, as a matter of fact, we're, we're talking even during your husband. Have you ever had to had to deal with the women of the church? Whoop! <laughs> Has the women of the church thrown themselves at the <laughs> Well, see. Oh, good life. All my, all the women that visit my church, they knew I was a different kind of first lady. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they knew I was a different kind. You was the other kind of first Woo. lady. I was the kind that if you slap me, I'm slapping your back, and we both going to the altar to repent. Uh, and if you got mine, you was good because I kept my platforms and my blonde and my brunette on the side of my bed. Oh, <laughs> you can't. Oh. You, you ain't gonna get mine, boo. I'm sorry. I'm, I, and see, this is a sad thing. You want to come to me crying about the devil or, or she done took my wife? 